had the questions been only about finding the number of trailing zeros in a factorial, we would not have a separate lesson for this. Yeah, it could have easily be done in the previous lesson itself. But with this trailing zeros, there can be some more tougher uh, questions as well. For example, in this question, if n factorial has 48 trailing zeros, find possible values of n. So till now, we knew the factorial and we had to find the highest power of a prime in it. What is now being told to us is we know the highest power of prime in it. Right? Uh, the highest power of 5 is 48. And what is the value of the factorial? So we are sort of going reverse. And this can get a little dicey. Thankfully, I asked you to memorize that 100 factorial has how many zeros? It should be a part of your preparation itself. Yeah? You should know it from memory. It has 24 trailing zeros. Let me put it just in a trailing Z. Z. Right? So, I might, it is, it is just a conjecture. Oh, I need 48 trailing zeros. I need 48 trailing zeros. So, if I need 48 trailing zero, is it going to be 200 factorial? This is a conjecture. I don't know as of now. So, it's just somewhere for me to start. That's why I tell you, keep, keep some benchmarks in your mind as memorized value. So, let's find it. So, if I have 200 factorial, has how many zeros I'm finding? 200 by 5 is going to be a 40. 40 by 5. 5 eights are 40. 8 is still divisible by a 5. 1 and 1 is not. That is 48 and 1. 49 trailing zeros. Oh, so I was off by 1 trailing zero. In fact, uh, you should think if 1 to 100 has 24 zeros, why is it from 101 to 200? Do I have 25 zeros? 24 and 24 would have made it 48, but it's not 48, it is 49. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you should understand from 101, 102, 103 and so on till 200. This is also a set of 100 natural numbers, right? You multiply it, this is going to have 25 trailing zeros. So think, why do I get that one extra? Why is it that one extra? Which number gives me this one extra? Anyway, now that is for me, uh, I want to be, I, I like to be perfect in, the, in understanding what's going on, right? But do that work. Let's come back to our question. Oh, but I needed 48 trailing zeros. Oh, I landed with 49. So let me go a little less. The higher up I go from 200, the more higher up I'll be getting more number of zeros as we increase it. So I'll come down to a little lesser number. Okay, I should have written this a little lower so that I can go reverse way. So let me just do that again. 200 factorial we found had 40 and 8 and 1 that is 49 trailing zeros. Let's continue please, sorry. 199 factorial. Would this have 48 zero? Let's see. 199 by 5. Do the process on your own. Okay. You should be faster than me or pause and find the number of trailing zeros. Let me do it here. 5 threes are 15. 49. 5 nines are 45. The remainder part is left over. Right. We, we ignore the decimal part. 39, is it divisible by 5? Yes. 5 sevens are 35. Ignore the decimal part. Is 7 divisible? Yes. So, this 39 and 140. Oh, this has 47 trailing zeros. Okay. Oh. 199 factorial has 49. 200 has 40. Uh, 199 factorial is 47. 200 factorial has 49. Now, which factorial would have 48 then? And so now, now that's why I said this is an interesting chapter in itself. And if you actually just, just, just do for my sake once, let's go further. 198 by 5, 5 threes are 15, 48, 5 nines are 45. And once you get a 39, the rest of it is going to be same. This also has 49 trailing zeros. 
right? Oh, what about 197, 197? Oh, one, uh, three is uh, 15, left over is uh, 47, 47. Oh, this also has the same 196. 196 also if you do will have the same 195 will have the same what will change is at 194 when i divide 194 by your 5 5 threes are 15 44 that will become 38 38 5 sevens are 35 oh the others remain same so this is going to have 46 trailing zeros The rest will have 47, 47, 47, 47, 47, 49. And if I just start working further, 201, when divided by 5 will give me 40. And so I again start getting the same thing. So what am I talking here is this process that we are doing now should be logical should be very, very, very logical. You don't have to keep writing them. So think about what we are doing. We are looking at consecutive factorials. We are going higher. We started from 200. We went one, one number lower, lower, 199 factorial, 198 factorial, and we observed a few observations. We'll, we'll see the rational behind it. If I go from 200 factorial to the next 201 factorial, the number of trailing zeros remains the same. Right. Anyways, so we have observed and now we see uh, just to finish off this question. If I go higher up, either it's going to remain 49 for some time and then increase. If I go lower, it's going to decrease. So the answer to this is there is no possible value of n. No possible natural number. And factorials are defined only for natural numbers, right? So there is no factorial which ends with a 48 trailing zeros. That is why we need this whole chapter. So let's see what's happening behind the picture.